I've been keeping a secret and the secret I've been keeping has been weighing on me. The secret I've been keeping has been challenging for me. The secret I have been keeping has been not a secret that I wanted to keep, but a secret that I just wasn't comfortable sharing. And the truth is, everybody, and welcome to season two of The Book of Brianna, a podcast. I am your host, Dr. Brianna Whiteside, and I'm really excited to welcome you into 2020. For. If you're watching this, I want you to give yourself a round of applause because you made it. You made it through. You made it to another year. Yes, you probably made it by the hair of your chinny chin chin, but the truth is that you made it. And I don't think that is something small. You should not take that for granted because a lot of people did not make it. And I know that sounds cliche, but it's so true. A lot of people did not make it. And so when I was thinking about 2024, let me tell y'all something before I get into that. I had my plans on how I was going to start 2024 because 2023 was such a difficult year for me. I said that I was going to take off the entire January in 2024. Y'all weren't going to hear from me. You weren't going to see me. I was taking the social media apps off my phone. And then the Holy Spirit kind of checked me per usual. I'm not above it. Um, he checked me and said, no, this is no time for you to lose your momentum. Yes, you may not feel like you've made a lot of progress last year, but you really did. And this is not the time for you to take your foot off the gas. This is time for you to continue moving forward. And so I was like, all right, cool. You know, give me the strategy. And so I got, the, I was getting the prophetic strategy for my year. And when we came to the podcast, I was like, okay, what? is the podcast going to look like now. The direction that he gave me, I'm just gonna be honest and say it was very uncomfortable because I wasn't prepared to share. <coughs> See, I'm getting choked up already. I wasn't prepared to share what I'm about to share with you in this podcast uh, episode. And so when when I started to ask God, hey, what what do you have for me? What, 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 what is the podcast? What is it gonna look like? I wanna be in alignment, things like that. He's like, your podcast is called The Book of Brianna, which means that people will be reading your book in real time. So in real time, you have to show up. In real time, you have to be honest. In real time, you have to tell the truth. And I'm kind of like, mm, I'm not really feeling that, God, because I have The Book of Brianna podcast and my teachings and everything else on the same platform is going to make me look kind of i felt that it was going to make me look double-minded but he he started to work on me and reveal like no you're letting your audience in on the process which is what a lot of people don't do they don't let people in on the process they don't let people see the vulnerable side and you know exceed what it really takes to follow god and so if you're going to be the book of brianna if this is what your podcast is going to be named then you have to be an in time not in the time a real time in time living epistle for people to read and that brings me to um the podcast episodes topic today I gotta be honest and tell y'all I'm a little bit nervous to share this with you um because some things I like to keep to myself about my life but I have been keeping a secret from you y'all may have discerned it you may have started to sense it last year when y'all saw me showing up in multiple episodes emotional in multiple episodes crying spitting and farting in multiple episodes just vulnerable right and you may have noticed like there's something going on with her that she's not saying and it's true and i'm probably gonna cry, tear up which is why i ain't put on my new eyelashes i've been keeping a secret and the secret i've been keeping has been weighing on me the secret i've been keeping has been challenging for me the secret i have been keeping has been not a secret that i wanted to keep but a secret that i just wasn't comfortable sharing and the truth is i have not told you all that i um <laughs> i have not shared that i am leaving my career mm -hmm. i bet y'all thought i was gonna say i'm pregnant no not me um but um i'm leaving my career i turned in my letter of resignation at the beginning of December. And this, I wanna kind of start unpacking this decision because I am not the person who makes impulsive 
moves. I am very calculated in how I move. And when the, the decision that I could not avoid anymore came up, that it was time for me to leave my career, I struggled with it. And I wanted to share this story with you all in retrospect. I wanted to already have the testimony before I shared, you know, the experience, but I kind of felt like God was leading me to share the test that I'm currently in right now and have been in for the last few months. So let me start at the beginning. I knew since I was in second grade, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I knew it. I, I, I had a second grade teacher who inspired me and I knew I wanted to be a teacher, not even knowing that God had uh, created me to be a teacher. I didn't know that I was born a teacher, but I knew that, you know, I wanted to be a teacher. And my entire life from second grade up until now, I've been a teacher. I've been pursuing that goal, right? I didn't know what kind of teacher I wanted to be, but I knew that that was the profession I wanted to go in and I never deviated from that path. It was always clear, you're gonna be a teacher. You know, so I'm going through school and I'm going through the PhD program, but something within me always knew that um, being an academic wasn't going to be the end all be all for me. Though I was pursuing this career, though I wanted to do it, Though I knew that, you know, this is the path, something in me knew you won't be here forever. And it was so, and I know it wasn't just something, it was really the Holy Spirit prompting me the entire time, like, look, girl, don't get comfortable. We're going to allow you to do this thing, but there's going to come a time where you're going to have to stop doing it this way. And so I used to make this joke. It was around 2019. So 2018, I became a professor. 2019 I started to make this joke like I'm gonna fire myself before I go up for tenure the jokes on me okay because I'm supposed to go up for tenure in March the jokes on me okay uh, but I was saying this and it was a joke but it was really inspired by the Holy Spirit saying you are going to stop this thing this process this journey right before you go up for tenure so he was warning me years in advance you're gonna stop it at this point and i even saw uh where there were several additional contracts um god says you weren't <laughs> you weren't wrong or you did not miss me when you heard well concerning uh the transition of your career uh there's going to come over the next three years um a, a decision that's going to literally cause you to, to, to like a literally a decision i see you at a table and there's two opportunities above you well there's two opportunities in, in front of you is either do i continue on in my narrative as, as a professor at unlv or do i take this opportunity that can literally uh provide generational wealth and other things to come do i focus on the security or do i go all in into the risk factor and so god is saying that i i, I i'm setting this this even up now um for what's to come what's to come of the future and you will decide well uh you will not move prematurely <laughs> uh you will not move prematurely but you will be asked it's a car and discern the seasons of the time and know when to act uh fast forward to 2023 i started to feel the prompting now in 2022 i knew as the year was coming to an end that so a lot of things were coming to an end in my life and i was seeking god asking like what what do you want me to do? Like, I'm, I'm noticing that there's an ending coming. Um, I'm sensing it. I don't really know what it involves, what it entails, but I'm sensing it. What do you want me to do? And so when we cross over into 2023, I knew exactly what was happening. I knew you're leaving your career in 2023, right? I didn't know how it would look. I didn't know what it would entail, but I knew by the end of the year, you will have turned in your resignation. Okay. Let me just say this. There is a difference between knowing something and experiencing what you know. Though I knew at the top of 2023 that um, I wasn't necessarily going to be a professor for much longer, when I actually got into the decision of it, to the, 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 get leading up to the deciding, leading up to having all the conversations that I've had to have with people over the year, last year, it, it, it brought up so many feelings. I was like, yeah, you knew 
You know, this wasn't going to be your end. Yes, of course, you knew these things, but now you're experiencing the emotion attached because you're literally about to give up the life you knew. I'm trying not to cry. The life you knew to follow God into a life you have no idea about and that you probably don't even want. And um, I battled with it. So all last year when y'all saw me showing up and encouraging and talking and all this other stuff, it was already in my mind. This is coming. Your career is coming to an end, Brianna. Yeah, you can continue doing everything you're doing online, but in the back of your mind, you know this is ending. So when it when we hit January, no, when we hit July 2023, no, let's say June. We hit June 2023 and I'm having to make decisions. God is talking to me about making decisions to go ahead and leave. And he, he's leading me into it, but I'm afraid because this is who I've been. This is my life. This is my livelihood. This is my career. This is how I make money. So you're, you're yes, you probably want to give me so many other things, but this is my world. And now my world is about to start shifting. What do you do? Because now you're shifting me out of who I've been. You're shifting me out of everything I've known into this unknown place, right? To follow you. So June comes, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to make a decision. Um, I don't know when I can probably try to finesse this thing and carry it on out, like draw it out. I could probably not leave in 2023 and actually leave like, you know, maybe spring 2025. Like I could draw it out. I don't have to make this decision right now, blah, blah, blah. Then God starts to force my hand on it, which ultimately led up to me making the, you know, turning the resignation in December. But I knew that this time was coming. The reason why y'all saw me breaking down on the podcast and crying and all this other stuff is because I was losing. I had to give up. I am giving up who I've been and who I thought I was. Yes, I knew I wanted to be a teacher in second grade. Yes, I went all through school. I pursued the career and I spent five years in this career. Five. And now I'm at this place where I have to give it up because God asked me to. It's kind of like this, this moment of, hey, Bree, we let you do. Heaven has allowed you to do what you've wanted to do in the first half of your life. We need you to let it go and come do us a favor. Come do what I am, what I need you to do. And I'm going to show you when you get there. As you go, I'm going to show you. Because I don't know what this next looks like for me. I don't know. There is no clear steps. And I've tried to see him. I've sought the prophetic voices. I've sought all the people. You know what I'm saying? I've done all the things. But God has his hands so close, his card so close to his chest that I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I know that there's something else on the other side of this. It has to be. He ain't going to have me out here crazy. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know what it looked like. I don't know who or what I am becoming because, you know, I thought I was pretty good. But I have to become in order to embrace who he has, what he has for me and who he who he needs me to be. And in the vein of transparency, y'all, I'm afraid. I know God didn't give me a spirit of fear. I know God got me covered. All the things that you could say to encourage me to drop the scriptures and all that, cool. But let me just be honest, because my inner circle have already done that, right? They've already told me. They've already done the things. God has always already told me. But that doesn't take away from the human experience of following God into the unknown. Stepping out on faith. But stepping out on faith in a, in a realm that you have no idea, have no connections in. You don't even know how it's going to look. This is where I am. I don't know my next step. I only know this step. There is no next level without this level's obedience. And in order for me to get to the next, in order for me, my latter days, to look better than my former days, 
I had to make this decision to leave everything I've known, the comfort, the safety, the identity, the clarity, everything that I've known and that I've set my life up to, to, to do and who I've become, I got to leave it, let it go. And this is not a decision that I have taken lightly. Like, I never thought that I would necessarily be the one to do a YouTube video or talk about, oh, I left my job because God told me to. I used to really think that these folks were wild. These folks were crazy. These folks were wild. And, you know, even as I was talking to people about what I'm having to do, they like, yo, you sure? You sure that's what God said? You know what I'm saying? Like, they're out there like, <laughs> and it was no way around it. It was no way around me not making the decision. Like, you know how that sound like, can't go around it, can't go under, you must go through. I had to go through it. I had to make the decision to close the door on my career. I'm not happy about it. I'm just going to be honest because I try to be honest and transparent with you all. Though I know that God has greatness in store for me, I'm not happy about it. Because you pay a price. And this is becoming more evident to me as I journey with God and as I move into the, you know, the things that he wants me to do. When that Bible say your life is not your own and you've been bought with a price, it's true. Your life is not your own. Once you give your, once you undergo salvation, once you give your life, life to Christ, your life is not your own. And he could demand that which he will of you because you've been bought with the price. And I, I don't think I necessarily realized the impact of that of that scripture, right? Your life not being your own. Or even like now that the, the story of Abraham going to sacrifice his son, it hit different for me. Now the story of the disciples, you know, leaving their careers and to follow God, it Jesus, it hit different for me. I know we like to sanitize these stories, but who in their right mind, even though you know that this is going to work for your good, who moves in these and does these decisions without um, feeling the impact of them, without feeling the, the human emotion evol involved in following God, the, the trauma, the turmoil, the, the unsurety of stepping out into the deep. Who, who makes these decisions without first counting the cost? For the last year, I've been counting the cost, not just of my career but the cost of me to emerge the cost of me to become to the cost of me to move forward in whatever god is having me to do the cost of becoming the cost of healing i've been counting these costs and when y'all saw me crying on the podcast last season y'all were seeing the, me experience the cost of losing something losing something that I worked my entire life for walking away because God said, Hey, can you do me a favor? I need you to do me a favor and I need you to end this because I need you to do something else, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. I need you to move in obedience to me and leave what you've known. Leave your father's house, Abraham. Get up, leave everything you've known, leave the former thing, leave, leave your identity, leave everything and follow me. Give up everything and follow me. And for me, I already felt like I had given up so much. I had given up my 20s. I'm in my, I'm in my, I'm in my mid 30s. I've given up so much. And for, me, for God to make um, another demand of me, another thing, I'm like, this is my last. This is my last laugh. This is the thing that was mine. This was mine. <laughs> this is the last thing I had. And now you want that too?
this faith walk ain't easy. This 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 obedience walk isn't easy, and I and I try to be obedient. But now you've asked me to give up my security or what I perceive to be my security. Now you're asking me to give up the found, the thing I've worked so hard to secure myself. You're asking me to give up my hard work to follow you into an unknown place where I don't have any connections, where I don't know how things work, where I don't even know the unknown place. I don't even have an address to the place, y'all. I don't even know what the place is, but you've asked me to give up something before you showed me. And that's what y'all saw last season. Y'all saw me grappling with the decision, a destiny decision that I had to make. That I've never seen anyone close to me make. You hear the testimonies, but I've never seen it. And you're asking me to make something, make this decision. And you haven't given me the next step yet. You're asking me, hey, go ahead. I got you. I got you. My rep his reputation is, is at, 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 at stake. And I get all that. It's all fine and dandy. You know, we know the cliches. But to feel the decision, to be out here. To be out here on faith, to walk away from a sure thing, y'all. When I turned in my letter of resignation, and I'm going to talk about that in another video, but when I turned in my letters of recommendation, my superiors were shocked because they're like, you're tenurable. You can go up for tenure in March and have job security for the rest of your life. You Because that's how it goes. Once you get tenure, you can stay at your job forever if you choose to. You never have to leave will always employ you and i'm like i know i know i'm terrible i know i've done all the things to get me promoted but i gotta go and i was never able to fully explain why i had to go because it didn't still didn't make sense to me i just knew this is the time and the season brianna you have to leave this to get that and because I try not to ever be a person who lives with regret and I never want to look back over my life and say, you should have done this thing. And I never did it. I never wanted that. That I guess I'm willing to bet on God. It ain't easy, though. I got to be I have to be honest to say it's not easy to be out here like I am out here and also let you into the process in the ways that I am about to start letting you into the process to see what walking by faith looks like. I don't get the luxury of telling you this story after I've come out. I don't because that's not what God wants me to do. That's not what you need to see. You don't need to see the tightly wrapped bow. You need to see the process. You need to see a woman who's been getting up every week last year, encouraging you and talking to you and teaching you, but also having an inner battle, knowing that she was going to have to give up the life she knew to follow a God that she knows and is learning more about. I don't get to look back and tell you the story. You're seeing the story unfold now. And this is what the book of Brianna is going to be about this season. It's going to be about all about the unfolding. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm going to show up. And I hope that you will it'll encourage you to do something God has been telling you to do and that you will have grace for me as I have grace for you. Because y'all, I don't know what is next. I don't know what is next. I don't know. But I know, I know who I belong to. I know who I belong to. And so as I journey with God, I hope you'll journey with me. I hope um, I hope to see you in the next installment because we're going to talk about more about this process and the intricacies of it. And, you know, I hope this encourages you to follow God. Follow God, trust God, and also just see a different perspective of what it looks like to emerge, what it looks like to become, what it looks like to walk by faith and not by sight because that's literally what I'm doing right now. But 
If you have been, if you like this episode, go ahead and like the video. Drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know, have you ever had to step out on faith in an uncomfortable way? And I will see you in the next installment of the Book of Brianna, a podcast. Make sure you share this out with your friends and family who could use support this year. And I'll see you soon.